happy or is it something more to it? Um, well, I'll kind of say something. So just before uh, COVID, um, for at least a year, I'd been doing yoga at my local gym. Mm -hmm. um, once COVID started, you know, obviously I couldn't go to the gym. So that kind of went by the wayside. But one thing I do love about yoga is that every single movement has more than one purpose. You know, whether it's to increase blood supply or quieten the mind or I was really quite blown away because I'd wanted to do it for years and then never got to do it so I I do miss it and it's one of those things that I need to get back into mm -hmm. um but the, again the great thing about COVID is like people started going online so it's just as easy to google um YouTube or yoga classes any kind of yoga class and and do it at home do you know what I mean so um yeah but for me is it on, on its own? Is it enough? No, because I like to walk. Um, I, I'm privileged to live near the beach. So it's literally 10, 15 minutes to the beach. And that's my Zen time. That's literally where I sit. I get downloads of information. Um, so for me, that's part of my work because when I'm in that Zen mode and I go down to the beach and I just sit there quietly and look at the water, I get thoughts coming. And then I right. come back and I'm inspired to write something in my book, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I swim as well. Look, you'd know I knew. What was I like when I was in India? I was kind of swimming. I uh, just love swimming because I think that's just very tranquil and it goes back to your roots of being in the womb as well. Yeah. Right. So I think that's right. important. Thank you, Caroline. Over to Sandeep. Sandeep, what is your intake on that? I feel... Um... Yoga is not only about exercise. It's not about lifestyle. If the word yoga, yoga, if you divide and talk about Sanskrit word, it means a, 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 a way that joins things. When you say things, it can be anything in the world. Yourself, you with yourself, you with others, others with you, you with the almighty, almighty with you, you with the nature, nature with you, everything that joins and combines and brings it together, makes a bonding, that is what is yoga. Correct. So if, you, if we take yoga only as um, fitness, okay, good for you. You're taking it as lifestyle, good for you. Weight loss, good for you. Mind balance, body, good for you. I think everybody, like how tango is many things to many people, same way yoga is many things to many people. Correct. So we all feel, um, many a times when you say yoga, people think, oh, exercising. Right. But a lot of people also think, Sandeep, that only by doing yoga, okay, for an hour every day or more, whatever they think so, that itself is enough to protect them from inside and outside. Is that true with you? I, I mean, do you agree? Not at all. That one hour... Is just one that 24 hours. What else is happening in the other 23 hours? Exactly. Are you doing yoga? Exactly. Are you joining people's hearts? Correct. Are you joining people's minds? Correct. That is also a way of yoga. Absolutely. Are you balancing your life? Correct. Are you balancing your diet, you're balancing your family, balancing with your work, balancing with your Netflix and uh, WhatsApp today, right? Are, are you balancing that whole thing? Or are you getting more heavy on the other side? That is also yoga. So, so one, in, on one side, happy. on one side, do yoga. And the other side, they are, they have absolutely no balance in life. So uh, it no doesn't help. The power of yoga. It, so exactly, the power of you yoga. Do whatever you want at one hour. Yeah. You can do yoga, you can do swimming, you can do walking, you can do running, skipping, do whatever you want. And you say, I'm still exercising. Basically, you're saying I'm exercising for that one hour. And yoga is one of the ways you're doing it. Mm. But actual way of yoga is the balance. Correct. Wonderful. Yes, next slide, Anu. Caroline, what do you say about this before we go further? Yeah, well, um, you know, obviously, because I um, my, my work involves helping people to address physical, psychological issues and using EFT matrix room printing. So while yes, yoga is very great, it's great for connecting with your body and, and blood supply and all that. Um, is it changing anything in the subconscious, the programming, the you know, physical and psychological issues? No. 
So from that perspective, um, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today if I had not categorically worked on the emotional side and the subconscious programming, especially with matrix reimprinting. So, right, Caroline. Yeah. So yeah. My, my question was exactly the same that people, a lot of people have these myths like only doing yoga is enough. They do mm. not bother to understand their emotional, their mental and their etheric side of the body. They do not connect to their soul. Like mm. Sandeep, he is a dancer. You are an EFT practitioner and matrix re-imprint now. So you all understand how important it is to connect to the psychological and the emotional and the mental level of a person. But Absolutely. not every common man does understand this. So the mm. idea of understanding each one's routine is to find out, are they giving time to themselves? If not, yeah. then what is it that they are missing on? You know? Mm. Because these are the concepts that people have by doing exercise, going to the gym and doing yoga mm -hmm. is absolutely fine. And I'm hale and hearty, but that is only one part of the story. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, the other thing that I do, actually, uh, for the last two years, I you, you would have shamans in, in uh, India. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I have a couple of blessed to have met a couple of shamans, father and son. A couple of years ago and i'm actually they've got a diploma of shamanism which i'm actually doing and every week we do a meditation and their their goal is to help us connect connecting with our soul because i think we lose that connection exactly. and so exactly. through meditation through bringing in our guides or um, shamanic animals. drums also shamanic drums also yeah well the, the son actually drums the whole way through it with his medicine drum but that's been very very powerful you know, mm. to, to actually have this ability at any moment to just take three deep breaths, connecting with my soul wherever I am, um, and then just ask myself questions. It's been really, really powerful. I cannot stress how powerful that's been because, you know, their premise is that we have any, everything we need to know about ourselves, we have in our, within our soul. We don't yes. need to go look out there. Absolutely. The Absolutely. So that's one of the best things I've done yep. yeah, in the last year. Yeah. So that's beautifully said by both of you. I'm going to carry you to the next quote. And uh, that uh, our beautiful friend Shoba has very beautifully selected. And it says, take a small step every day. So Shoba, if you can uh, yes. uh, go further with that. Let me elaborate this a little. Uh, just to give you a brief and understand your perspective on this is uh, Caroline and Sandeep and even Anu for that matter, you would all agree that there are lots of people who are only thinkers and talkers with no action. They are not action oriented. Okay, like for example, not for example, I mean, there might be people who are who may be talking a lot of things like, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And it, it remains mm. still want to do that. There is no action taken over it. Okay. Mm. So they are procrastination. Uh, they are procrastinating their own actions. I want to do so many things. But what is the first step or the small step that you are taking towards what you want to do? So what is your take on that? And do you think that taking a step Act, being action oriented is more important than only talking and thinking or the vice versa. I mean, there are people from different genres who do different things and they are action oriented people. They talk less and do more. But there are too many of them who only talk, who only mm. think. The thinking remains in the head and the talking remains in the talks, but there is no action or no steps taken towards what they want to do. Mm. so over to Sandeep first okay. answer that thank you oh, well I completely agree with the different types of people and especially in dancing I get to meet all of them <laughs> I'm sure One who they want to say, join your class yeah, they come no. and say, oh, we, all, we all dance like this we all dance like that like, they come with so much of uh, excitement and so much of your zeal and, and power that you feel like wow this is going to be like tomorrow we're going to get a champion out of them you know and uh, and then they, then they don't come. They don't show up. There are some who just come quietly and are are magic on on stage. And there are some who will come and speak as well and who will put in that kind of effort also. But yes, a small step, every step does matter. Especially when I talk about dance, it does because you need to practice one step a million times 
wow. before you get it right, before it comes clean, before it starts looking beautiful, graceful, and elegant. Mm -hmm. And for that, you just need to practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and not have any extra uh, bubbles to it like like a champagne and then kind of come down because it will, it will never work for you especially in the field of art correct so yes a step every day is the only key to success you talk about it you don't talk about it does not matter but what's important is to do it because only when you do it then you'll be able to present it later even on even if you do it and you fail it's absolutely fine That's the okay. fact that you even tried to do it you took an action, you informed the universe, you told the universe, yes, I want to do it. I'm taking action. Whether you succeed or no, that's a different story altogether. It depends on how uh, how it goes. But You know, I must tell you the incident. There's this gentleman who still comes to my class. It's been about, I think, 14 years now. Wow. He's still coming and dancing in my classes. And he, of course, is a much uh, elderly gentleman. And uh, there were times, especially when he was about eight, ten years back, I'm talking about, uh, eight years back maybe, all these young girls would come and say, oh, we don't want to dance with that old man. You know, he's too slow. He's too slow. But today, they all want to dance with him. I think yeah. that is what is the achievement. That's the achievement of that man. And I said, you girls used to say no to him eight years back. Remember that. And today you all wait that when is this man going to be free and we, we, he'll come and ask us for a dance. <laughs> because he has put that effort past so many years into himself. Thank and today you. he is able to reach a point which these girls that time would say no to him. Right. I think that is what uh, is inspirational. That is what teaches us that don't give up. Just keep doing it again and again and again and again. And one day you will get what you are wanting to get. Right. Thank you so much. Over to Caroline. Uh, well, first of all, I think it might be worth mentioning that, um, you know, prior to seven years ago, I was married. I had three children that were growing up. Um, I was married for 23 years. I was uh, nursing, community nursing uh, for 10 years, for the last 10 years. Uh, before I resigned from that eight years ago. And that was the hardest nursing job I've ever done. It's very demanding. Uh, was the wife that took off care of the household, did the shopping, dropped the kids off, picked them up. Da -da -da. So I've been in that world of overwhelm. Do you know what I mean? And I, I totally understand that when you're in overwhelm, it's very hard to do anything. I didn't look after myself. You know, nothing like I do now. Um, so I guess I've been in that situation of overwhelm and I think when you're overwhelmed, you tend to do nothing. It's so overwhelmed, it's just like, I'm just gonna do nothing. Whereas now the way I look at my life is having come from that now, yes, I don't have the children at home anymore. Yes, I've chosen to live in a smaller house, much smaller house, um, because I don't really need anything big, you know what I mean? Because then that's more to look after, you know what I mean? And at the moment there's only me. So, um, but the way I operate is, you know, if I've got a lot to do, the one thing I tell myself every time is, what do I need to do now that's going to make the biggest difference, either right. personally or um, in my business? It doesn't matter, whatever it is. And I, and I can do that all, all day is what do I need to do now? And I'll just put it out there and then just see what I need to do. And that might be just go for a walk, Caroline, like stop your mind, go for a walk, see what happens when you come back, refresh, and then carry on. And it just kind of seems to work well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to the third quote that uh, Shobha has very beautifully selected. And that is, apple a day keeps a doctor away. So over to Shobha. <laughs> <laughs> it's self-explanatory, isn't it, Caroline and Sandeep? Well, I'm just but thinking of all the apples I've got here. <laughs> just here. I felt like going and getting one and standing here with it. <laughs> so well, yeah. apple a day keeps the doctor away. But in my case, I would like to keep uh, the doctor with me if he is handsome and keep the apple away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just kidding. All right. So uh, basically, there are uh, <clears throat> the here the concept we are talking about is fruits. Of course, it keeps your mind, body, and soul healthy. No doubt about it. So again, coming to the point, if we have to combine, this is the last quote, I guess. I know, right? Yeah. So if we have to combine the yoga and uh, 
the small steps to be taken every day and the apple together. In, in short, what I want to understand from both of you is that just physically being fit with yoga, with health, exercises, uh, having a good diet, fruit diet and stuff like that, that in this current pandemic situation and in the current era of transition that we are moving, all right, I uh, do you think that only these small little things are enough to connect yourself to your soul and to Mother Earth? Or is there something more to it? What is your suggestion on that? So what I'm trying to understand is only physical activities from the outer side that you are doing, maybe exercise, maybe going to work, maybe looking after your house and so on and so forth. Does that, is that enough for a human being in the current scenario and this transition phase without focusing on their soul and doing things what the soul is asking you to do? Um, well, I can kind of talk about that because, say, for example, chronic fatigue. Do you, do you call that over there chronic fatigue? Yeah. Chronic fatigue. Okay, cool. So one of the aspects of chronic fatigue is when somebody is not on the right path. They're not following their true destiny and purpose, you know. And so what can happen is the soul just kind of literally kicks in and goes, no, we're not on the right path. We need to stop. We need to reassess everything and then and that you know and that might be through um you know somebody might get cancer for example that's another one as well where the person just literally has to stop and reassess their life and then you know that's when I find you know with my clients that they'll start looking at their diet they'll start looking at all ways um quite often um um complementary therapies to get you know get themselves back physically emotionally mentally so and then start to go actually this is the path I want to take and then they can heal from whatever that was yeah so that, it's really really important and as Anu says you know um, it's all about vitality if we're not vital through eating the correct foods through having an alkaline body instead of very highly acidic as we are a lot today then, um, you know, you're not going to have the energy to want to do all this. Job. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I've done um, a few detoxes, actually. And so, you know, when you do detoxes, we were having water that was 9 pH all the time. It's the only kind of water. We were having everything was alkaline. Um, we were having clonics. Now, I know everybody doesn't get the chance to do a detox to that level. But the point is that having done one and feeling how clean your body is and be all, you know, body order disappears and you think more clearly. And yeah, it's just when you feel that, you realize how toxic our bodies become when we're putting all these processed foods and we're not having, you know, the fruits and the vegetables. And uh, yeah, so that's that was a big learning for me to have that experience of being very, very clean. And yeah. then you get on the plane and, and look at the, at the food on the plane and you can almost feel the toxicity of it because you're so clean, you know, so, yeah. All right, thank you, Caroline. Thank you so much. And uh, over to Sandeep. There's a very beautiful uh, Doha of Kabir. Hmm. I don't know, I'll have to explain that in English to Caroline. I just love Kabir Doha. <laughs> yes, please. man mel na jaye. Nahai dhoe kya hua jab man mel na jaye. Meen rahe pani me dhoe bas na jaye. Wow, fantastic. So means, there are many meanings to it, actually. But uh, it, if I just have to explain that in English, it just says, what's the point of having a bath? What's the point of cleaning yourself, putting soap, shampoo, whatever perfumes that we put, mm. when actually our mind is not clean? Mm. Yes? And when we say purity, clean, safai, shuddhata, that we talk about, it's not just with the food that we eat decluttering also it's even the thought of the mind yeah. Think, thinking about is that are, are those the apples <laughs> yeah to keep the doctor away are, are you thinking of the apples are you thinking of those fruits are you thinking of health so the mind not just putting it inside your stomach but what about your thought your your actions 
your feelings, your emotions, are they also equally clean? Are they equally healthy? I think that is what, uh, when you say Apple a day keeps a doctor away, I would say to me, it means that Apple is about the purity of food and the thought and the lifestyle that you're living and you're giving Correct. both together because only then the doctor will stay away. Otherwise, which Otherwise, it will not. Doctors around you, yes. <laughs> and all the all the drugs, all the all the womanizing, all the uh, all the drinks, all the royal side vodka and whiskeys, all handsome doctors. Why not? We all want that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Caroline and Sandeep, and uh, over to Anu. Uh, so, Caroline, I need to ask you this, uh, you know, the, exactly what Sandeep, we were asking him. Is there anything in your childhood that really happened that pushed you into the, into the space of wanting to take care of other people? You were a nurse before, and right now also, if you, if you really look at it, you are looking at human mind and human body, and you're trying mm. to keep some balance between yourself in your body and for other people. So what in your childhood that do you think, or was there somebody that, that kind of molded you into a thought pattern like that, like nurturing other people? Yeah. Um, look, I think because, well, in theory, I was the oldest sister to Cal. You know, my brother's the founder of uh, Matrix Reimprinting. Um, I think it was, I took on that kind of role, even though I was only two years older than him. Um, and so I always remember just being one of those kids that just wants to help other people, you know, I was a very nurturing child. And so I think I actually went into nursing, not necessarily to help people heal, but to nurture people because I, I was a very nurturing nurse, you know. So and then, um, you know, the whole giving out drugs, especially when I was district nursing, you know, sometimes we'll, well, all the time we'll go into people's homes with the elderly giving them sometimes 10 different drugs at a time and you know it was kind of and I was already doing EFT matrix reimprinting at the time and it just wasn't congruent that I'm giving out all these drugs that I knew were toxic that these people were saying to me I'm sure this is killing me and I'm thinking yeah it probably is you know so um that I, I couldn't continue it was so incongruent with you know, again, doing natural therapies compared to giving out these drugs. So I had to make a decision. And um, yeah, and so when I learned TFT, for example, uh, in 2007 with Carl, when he came to Australia, my thought was, I can help people more, you know? And then with Matrix Reimprinting, which came about three years later as Carl evolved it, I also, I then I was, oh, I can help even people even more. But the thing that I was really saying actually was I can help myself more because matrix room printing, because my pattern as a child and growing up was um, I used to dissociate as a, as a strategy for dealing with trauma. And, um, and so matrix room printing is perfect for this. So it's, um, it's interesting how we go on a career path based on trying to seek resolution for ourselves, find, trying to feel, find answers to ourselves. Um, and yet we think it's to help other people. But as I say to people like, well, we can continue on that path now, but let's just get rid of the traumas that got you here now so you can carry on and help people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, yes. So, yeah, um, yeah I, ca I can't think of anything specific in my childhood other than that was my nature. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the original was I wasn't, I was, I did want to be a nun. For a short mm. time i don't know what but um you know i've got to i've got to mention past lives here don't i you know so i i know i wasn't known in the past life so i was already tuning in as a child to that but that got dismissed i think i like boys too much to be honest um in this life and um and then i was a nurse in the war as well so that also plays a part in who you become you know we know that as well so that's that's been an interesting journey to investigate my past lives yeah so uh, was it a instance that you came across your past lives or was it like, uh, you know, you studied a course and then you suddenly thought about your past life and you started drooling on it and started, uh, you know, kind of 
or un unraveling your life? What was it about? Um, in regards, well, see, this is why I'm writing the book to educate people on how we are so tuned into our past lives in so many levels that we don't, but we don't know it unless somebody educates you on how that is. And so, um, for example, in my 20s, I did a meditation and I saw kind of two ladies stood next to each other um, in black outfits, um, basically like a servant in, you know, in, in British times, you know what I mean? And I kind of looked at it and went, I don't know what that means, you know, and nobody was there to say, analyze it for me and say, oh, that might be a past life. Nobody did that for me. And that was in my twenties. And then um, I did a meditation where I was kind of literally felt myself in the water and I felt like I was a dolphin actually. And um, nobody said anything then, you know what I mean? So, and it wasn't till um, eight years ago where I was in England and somebody made, did matrix reimprinting with me because they wanted to do a demo. And I said, and all of a sudden my subconscious went, um, oh, remember that memory when you were in your twenties? And I said, oh, I think that might've been a past life. Something's telling me. And then that was the clincher. Like I did pass, I did matrix reimprinting on that. And then saw myself in England, you know, in this household go, um, we did some healing on it. It was like all this carnage outside, whether it was a plague or whatever. And then um, I naturally saw myself kind of go upstairs and it, it just represent, it, it reminded me of a TV show that I used to watch all the time in England called Upstairs Downstairs. And I always, as a child, resonated with the servant, by the way, you see. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, like even as a child, I was so tuned into that past life that I resonated with the servants, yeah. But after that past life, that's when I, I went back to, came back to Australia and um, said, right, I'm gonna leave in six months time. That was my goal originally. And I did leave in six months time and then I've never looked back. And that was through healing that past life, you know, cause it was keeping, what was happening was I was being kept in this servant role. And then that had to go for me to move on to become an entrepreneur business owner you know international um trainer and everything that so it's been pretty phenomenal Very awesome exciting. awesome yeah. journey yeah yeah i'm dying to ask sandeep have you ever touched any of your past lives while in dance have you felt like you're in a trance and as if you you're doing something that you you didn't believe that you were doing but you had already done before so it was just happening like how osho says it's just happening. It's not something I'm doing. Have you had such an experience? Yes, a few times. But the first time when I had it, it was quite strange. I remember it was, um, what, I think 14 years back, we were doing a show 15 years back. And I had rehearsed a lot for it, almost about two months. And uh, in the middle of the dance, it's still giving goosebumps thinking about it. In the middle of the dance, um, I saw myself dancing oh my. and I still remember I was sitting like this and I'm watching down like as if it's a balcony show and I'm watching myself performing down it was only for about a few minutes and then of course the show got over and everything and my, my wife asked me oh, were you okay I was like did I make any mistake in the choreography she said, no, you didn't, you didn't make any mistake, but when I would looked into your eyes, you were not with me. And I, then I told her, you know, you might not believe what I'll tell you, but during that show, for those few minutes, I saw myself dancing. She said, don't tell me, I don't believe that. I said, yeah, that's what exactly happened. And I don't know what really it was. Mm. Until today, I can feel that it was a magical feeling. I so, remember uh, my pose, I remember my look, I remember what I was wearing and I'm sitting and I'm watching myself dance, which is strange, it never happened to me before. Of course, after a few mm -hmm. times it's happened, but it's, it's, that first feeling was, was so unreal. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it just makes you feel beautiful because uh, you finally see yourself dancing, <laughs> otherwise you're to see only videos. <laughs> 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 See, that, that to me is a clear example of, you know, you were already at some level tuning into what you've done before and bringing that gift in, 
without even having to access it. It was just within you, you know, within sure. your soul. Yeah. And I must tell you one more incident. You know, I, I went for, to learn this dance called Tandura in Egypt. It's a Sufi whirling dance, which uh, Shobhaji also has seen me perform. Lovely, it's lovely. And, uh, I was performing it and this teacher of mine, he is a, like the, one of the top teachers in the, in the world. And he, uh, he while, while spinning, he speaks and whatever he speaks comes true. Wow. I would always ask him that, how do you do that? So he just says, I don't know. Something comes to my mind and I speak. So I was like, okay, yeah. fine. And one day I was spinning. And when you say I'm spinning, I'm talking about spinning on and on for almost two hours, three hours nonstop, which is going into thousands of thousands of spins. And it's like a trance. And suddenly I felt a light coming into me and hitting me. And I stopped and I fell down. And that is when he told me, no, you should not have stopped because that's when uh, some power comes into you to start enlightenment, connecting you with, with what you're praying to, what you're reaching out to, what you're calling out to. But that was the only time it happened. It never happened again, let me tell you. I have been spinning for years after that, but nothing had happened to me after that. Maybe because I'm still thinking of that light, one has to just let go of everything in life, be completely thought free for anything to come come to you. If you come with baggage, no relationship will work. So same way if you go with baggage, asking him for help or thanking him, still nothing will work. So I guess those days I was learning with, with no, no thought in my mind. I was just spinning and spinning and spinning. But now I'm spinning for a purpose. Now I'm spinning for a reason. So whenever you spin for something with a reason, I think it will never connect. So I, I'm waiting. Maybe one day it will happen again. Great. Um, yes, Shubha. Yes. So uh, thank you so much, Sandeep, for sharing this. But after this, how, did you try to explore past lives? Did you meet any past life therapist to understand what's going on and why this happened? This one right now, Sandeep, right here. Yeah. Right here, right here. Well, uh, if you ask me, no, I have never done that. Because I have, uh, there are some of my students, in fact, who are into, the, into that whole uh, concept like we're talking about, you know, they, they do all, uh, all of that wonderful things to understand what we were in, in the previous lives and how we can come to terms with today's life based on what happened before. But I guess I have always been this very uh, happy-go-lucky person. I just accept the way the life has come to me and it's okay. Good days are there, bad days are there, worst days are there, and the happiest days are there. And they will come and they will go and something else will come. So I have kind of never really, um, never really thought of going back and to check. It'll be nice to do it, but I don't know. I never f I felt the need for it. I just... Uh, let just go. We'll see. Doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Thank you, Sandeep. Caroline, just asking you something on past life since the discussion is on. Yeah. When you do a past life session, uh, yeah. is it that after your session is done, those past life imprints are there in your subconscious mind and you keep thinking about it? Is it the fact? Well, um, let's just say there was a quite a traumatic memory mm -hmm. that um, and the person hadn't realized that they're, you know, whatever they're going through, whether it's relationship thing, um, issues, uh, physical, psychological, and they just don't know what's a past life. Yeah. So um, what we do is we've evolved a technique of actually see, I don't do a past life regression. I only go back to past lives as the person needs to, depending on what they want to work on if that makes sense, yeah? And so um, we we have a way of getting back to these past life memories, whether it's, you know, a lot of the people I work with were burnt at the stake or punished for the alternative healing work that they did, whether it's herbs or, you know, natural medicines. And so um, we go back and we, we do some healing, we do some tapping, um, and we, we can change that past life. So instead of it being a negative life event, that it, we, it, it's edited like a movie into a positive event. And so when the person now looks back at it, it's, it's a positive experience and not a negative. And when we do that, that now, now 
um, without doing anything changes your law of attraction. And so you might start, and this is what happened to me, like um, started attracting um, like very, very positive people into my life that were spiritual, that needed to go into the past lives. And, you know, it's quite phenomenal how all that works when you're open to all that. Uh, so then they don't really need to keep thinking about it because it's done it's permanent healing and then they kind of go back into life and then work you know something else might come up and you know they might need to go into another past life and heal that in relation to it but one of the things that I I really believe and what I've proven actually is that you know we, we can kind of and I've heard it said that we've got enough to deal with in this life without going past lives well to me it's like well out the patterns from a past life coming into this lifetime you know if it's positive great you know what i mean if it's, it's a positive straight or so dancing but what about these negative patterns and doesn't it make sense to actually start going past lives first to disappear the pattern there so that you can naturally progress on in this life um yeah so so much quicker and that's what i'm finding so it's very powerful very powerful so should i work in Caroline worked on me with yeah. but what she does is she doesn't hypnotize you to take in you no. into past life that's not what she does no. the past lives appear like how if Sandeep was talking about and he said oh I went on the stage and I felt my mm -hmm. she will start from there tapping on him mm -hmm. and cleaning up that space and it's not left as oh you were so and so in the past life she mm -hmm. goes and sorts it out for you so she is yeah. not a past life regressor. She is mm -hmm. a slight sorter. She okay. picks up the space and transforms that energy if there was anything negative into you getting your learnings and into something positive. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's yeah. tied also with the pandemic right now. And maybe we could yeah. ask a question here from both our speakers that, uh, you know, could it be that you know, we're talking about past lives, you're talking about this life, and we're talking about a pandemic that's there. And some of us yeah. are absolutely okay. Some of us are not okay. Some of us have lost our loved ones. And the, the thing is that most of us are losing something very important in our life. It could be a job, like Sandeep said. It could mm -hmm. be a child. It could be a father, mother, a sister, brother, a property so what do you think are the lessons that this pandemic has come to teach us? And uh, if, uh, if uh, Caroline or I think we can start yeah. with Caroline first. And in fact, I would, yeah. you know, I would say that let all four of us look at this and answer it in our own way. So yes. let's Caroline. Thank you. I'm happy to start. So um, during this during this time, um, you know, I've obviously not been able to travel internationally. So I've been able to focus on um, other ways of working, which of course Zoom is perfect. And I've I've done some mentoring sessions with previous students, and I've asked them kind of, okay, let's look at what what issues are coming up for you as a result of COVID. And I've, I've actually got a client in Holland, in fact. Um, that came to me as well and uh, with an issue and the issue actually still went past life so even though the dynamics of COVID which was the isolation feeling abandoned um, you know all the anger towards all the curfew I think they were having curfews at the time and so that went past life um, and some of the other students obviously in this lifetime too so the reason people have been triggered is not about what's happening now it's about what that triggers them about their childhood or all about their past life does that make sense yeah because when we actually did the healing work they kind of went well it's actually not that bad is it well these curfews well maybe I can use this time to rest and relax and and have a whole different perspective yeah um so uh, for myself you know as um, I was blessed to um, be living in a beautiful house, you know, a bit further down from where I am now. And I literally know that I was put on a sabbatical by the universe. So when the, all the curfews hit, it was my time to go, you know what, this is the time to write a book. And if I don't write it now, I will never I'll never be able to come back and say I've never had any time. 
because you just can't go there, right? <laughs> You're not even allowed out after eight, uh, eight o'clock at night. So that was my kind of push to go, you've got no excuse, Caroline, you know? So um, that's when I started getting this book done last year. So yeah, again, it comes back to perspective, doesn't it? Um, of the situation. And I understand people have gone through horrible times and, you know, lost jobs, like you're saying, lost businesses. Um, I understand that, but then it's like, well, why, you know, those of us that are um, living this life of success that have worked on our subconscious memories and traumas, why is it that we've got through this so much easier than somebody who hasn't? That's a very cool question to ask, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So you know, uh, there was a time when we said there were three most important things for us. Roti, Kapada, Makan. Yeah, big hit Bollywood film also was there based on that. But today we realize it is not the Roti, Kapada, Makan which is important. So there was Roti, there was Kapada, and there was Makan. Of course, today Roti is important, but we don't have to go to restaurants to eat lavish food. A simple rice and dal is enough for us because yeah, everything yeah. is shut outside. All restaurants are closed. So you can't be, uh, you can't be eat going out and having five star meals because it's not available to you anymore. What's available to you is just the closest grocery store where you get the simplest of, the simplest of stuff. Yeah. Roti, kapra not required, two jodi is enough. Today you have you something else, you wash it well again because no parties are happening, no weddings are happening, nothing, right? Yeah, so yeah. two pair of clothes are more than enough to survive whole year long. I think I have actually mm. worn just two pajamas in the whole year that the whole lockdown was going on. And I did realize that all these cupboards you see behind me have <laughs> been locked for the past one year because I haven't opened them. All my suits are lying inside and I have not worn them at all. So you don't require the kapra. And your makan also is just that one little room that you live in because that's your whole world today. Mm. Your whole world that is your own people are with you next to you in that one room and that is what is the world to you. And we kept thinking all the time that the world to us is the outside world. My friends, my this, my that, my travel, my my shows, my events, you know, thousands of people watching me, that, that, that was the world. But that is actually not the world. Our world is actually sitting with us in our rooms. Mm. Our so do you, uh, do you agree, Sandeep? We are living in the world of illusion? Definitely we are. And this pandemic has taught us that only thing that's right now important is Wi-Fi because uh, <laughs> that's what keeps us happy and connected even to our dear ones and loved ones. And yes. if we're going to get away from them, this is the only place that we can go uh, as to, to save ourselves. But yes, these three things, Roti, Kapra, Makan, and the fourth one today is the Wi-Fi. I think these four things, the, the whole concept of it has changed. We actually don't don't need so much that we thought we would always need it. Minimalistic. Absolutely. Yes. And I think it, it's good. Imagine this pandemic, if it would have happened in the 1980s, what we would have done, we could have not been able to talk today like this. We would have not been, what we would have, there would have been no Netflix, there would have been no Amazon Prime, there would have been no uh, Swiggy, there would have been no Amazon to do anything. What we would have done, we would have actually been sitting and talking to our mothers and fathers and children. Yep. And today we are getting the time to do it and let's have the best of it. Absolutely. It is, it's been, um, I, I think uh, this one year, one and a half years that the lockdown has happened or the, or the COVID virus has hit all of us. I think it's done really good to a lot of us in so many ways. Yes, we have lost mm -hmm. a lot of things. Indeed, I agree. And being big, big losses emotionally, financially, socially, physically, everything. But I think what it's given us is to understand that our most important part of the world is just next to us and let's take care of it and embrace it the best way possible. Absolutely mm. agreed, Sandeep. Absolutely. So Shobha, would you like to throw light on what you found during the pandemic? Because I think this is a very important question. That's, that's been, and I've been hearing you all along talking about it. So let's share it. <laughs> 
Well, I a lot of insights during pandemic, right from the time it started. Initially, uh, in 2020, when it started, it got me a little nervous. All uh, more because my mom is on bed, and I was wondering, you know, if doctors are not there, available, and hospitals are not there. God forbid, she never has to go there. But you know, those thoughts keep run, uh, running my mind and stuff like that. What will happen? Kesa hoga, kya hoga, and all, all of that. But as the time passed, I got adapted to sitting at home and doing nothing. And then I had lined up my event also in St. Regis, which could not happen. So that got me a little more tense in thinking, okay, what next? What next? So there I came to that taking of the small step. I am not very digitally mm -hmm. uh, very good at digital you know, mm -hmm. uh, technology. So I said, now how to do this digital thing? It's, it's a first time for me. But the second thought came to my mind, okay, okay, that is always a first time in life to do things. Yeah, let's begin. You know, we may not be, we may not become a pro like others are, but there's always a learning involved. And then right enough, thanks to the universe, it got connected me to the right people who helped me through technology, who helped me through everything. And I was able to create a digital event first time in my life and uh, Mr. Hira Nandani, a person like Mr. Hira Nandani appreciated me and told me that I am the pioneer of creating an event set, you know, in digital media. And I was like on top of the world. I said, oh, I have somehow managed to do this. If I can do this, I can do much more. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then slowly uh, after the event, I started doing webinars. Again, I got connected to the host, the co-host who was mine. Uh, who was there with me and he helped me a lot with how to handle zoom and how to handle this how to handle the google meets so helping each other you know i started learning these things and then yeah that's how i grew but one thing what i realized this is all of course the work part of it and you know the physical part of it but my focus has always been the inner calling for me during this pandemic and until now is I want to create awareness on soul enlightenment. See, we are the souls. Every person is a soul and we are incarnated into physical, emotional, mental and etheric bodies. Okay. There is a universal message the nature is trying to give us. We mm -hmm. are not opening our eyes to that. We are only till now involved in materialistic world in the physical mm. world but we are not connected to our soul and mm. i guess that is the message what the universe is trying to give us and mother earth is trying to give us i always believe in one thing which is karma okay and this period the era which started from 2020 and supposed to be going to 2030 i believe and then you know a lot of this transition phases are going to happen but the natural calamities that are happening across the world the pandemic the covid and so many deaths it's so hurtful i mean it just touches my heart you know i bleed actually when i even listen to these things okay, okay this happened here and that happened there but I alone cannot do anything. Like I always say, okay, it is in togetherness that we can do a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I alone cannot change the world. I am just through these mediums, the little that I know these mediums, I am just trying to create a little awareness to people that it's time to wake up. Okay, we have done mm -hmm. enough of money making in life. We have done enough of our activities for everybody in life but it is time to wake up within mm. and yeah. connect to mother earth because that is the priority and these are the karmic lessons that we are learning mm. so yeah. even if we cannot wake up now then i mean we are always complaining covid ho gaya hai, you know natural calamities are happening but let's let us understand why they are happening today we are living in a world which is full of radiation, which is full of negative emotions, which is full of jealousy, which is full of anger, anxiety, you know, uh, backbiting each other, uh, you know, and all these so many negative things. We are radiating this negativity into nature. So nature is going to bounce back to you with negativity only. But if mm. we try to spread positivity to nature, the positive vibes would come back to us. Isn't it natural? 
what we mm. are echoing is the same what we are getting we have to gather in togetherness accord so much negativity so what are we complaining about today and what right have we to complain about today because it is we who have done it right mm. do you all agree that it is we who have done it nobody else has done it for us when well said mm. shobha and i'm so happy that uh, you've actually expressed yourself and that was the thought behind creating the society life. behind wow yes that oh, what yeah. sandeep is doing see we are uh, right now uh, this is the second episode as i i mentioned earlier but uh, sandeep and carlin i want to take this to the common man because see we all are from a background where we have achieved something and we have had our disciplined life and we are following something because we are alternate healers because we are dancers because we are singers and connected to art we somehow are connected to our soul as well but there are hmm. many people who are carrying so much of their daily baggages in terms of negative thoughts negative emotions and uh, yeah. you know uh, work stress and so on and so forth and they need to be focusing on two things in life which i very strongly believe in and trust me i have seen miracles with that is only gratitude and forgiveness you may do what the hell you want in life but if those two things are not done Mm-hmm. the diseases are bound to touch you they yeah. are bound to touch you sooner or later because you have not you are carrying the unforgiveness within mm. you need True. to learn to forgive only then you have the right to ask god to forgive you mm. it has to come all from within so opening up from within is very important i am sorry but i am talking very naturally and i am talking within the heart because these are the thoughts which are in my mind and i want to share it to you know everybody and to help them understand that it is very important that besides your daily routine of what you are doing it's important to connect to yourself whether it is for 10 minutes for half an hour for one hour in whatever way you can not necessarily be only meditation but yes meditation would uh, help you evolve yourself faster and there are many other things which a person can do so depending on each one's lifestyle i thought anu and me could be a we two of the best people who can guide them to what they can and they cannot do and help them move a little step ahead towards their soul realization so this mm. is my society behind wow where i'm trying to create soul realization and stuff like that. line which uh, uh, james very famous irish uh, writer james joyce wrote in one of his books where he said that many people do not many people body parts are not with them yes mm. yeah. mind body and soul is not aligned at all uh, body parts are not aligned Yes. we as dancers and artists like you exactly said shobha ma'am somewhere are aligned in some way because we learn the art form okay. but many people are not aligned and james joyce so beautifully had said it in, in, in his book which I, of course later on got banned as well and it he said exactly the same thing there are many people who do not are not connected their hands are not connected, connected with the body their legs are not connected with their with their with their uh, with their body mind is not connected they with the talk body. something they think yeah. something their eyes are somewhere they are looking somewhere they are not in, not in it's alignment with each other to uh, to discover yourself even if it is takes a lifetime to do it no problem but just be at it you will one day get it mm-hmm. yes so oh, that was a nice one be mm-hmm. at it you might one day get it <laughs> absolutely and and yes, you know from the word from you now what you have to say on this say that again i said let's hear from your perspective what you have to say on this you talking to me yes okay so i feel that we need to be more honest and authentic to ourselves absolutely my mentor dr quasi has always said this and i'll quote and unquote him we can live a life of dreams we can live a life of achievements we can live a life of opportunities and success so if we are not honest to ourselves and we are only working to create harmony within outside there is no harmony inside the harmony inside will reflect outside when we are honest to ourselves 
and honest to everyone else. The other thing that he says, and I love what he says is, living is a process of let go. We every day morning let go of all the toxins that we accumulate in our body. And yet, because we didn't learn to let go, we are now paying a heavy price of letting go of so many things like dear ones, loved ones, job. And these are all obstacles or are they all opportunities to learn something new and to create something new? I believe like Sandeep said, he whirled around for three hours to touch the light. I think we are all whirling around to touch the light in our life. It just depends with what intention we are gonna hold that light in our heart. I love what Caroline does and she says, let's not just hold our life here. It was a series of something that we've always said in Bhagavad Gita. It is the past that will repeat again. And that's all she's saying. It's the past that's repeating again. And there were many lives in this life and that's been proven by so many and has been mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. And with you mm -hmm. Shobha, what you are doing is trying to create a world with happiness and joy and love. So I just feel that we, even on this, this platform are trying to get our flavor and we are all different, different flavors, different flowers yes. who can be put together and together it's so much more tastier. Otherwise, it's just about me, 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 me. And my mom said very nicely, sounds like a goat going, mm. <laughs> <laughs> sounds more beautiful when we say we. Yeah. Caroline, you know, I have always been uh, doing the EFT by Brad Yates. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Brad Yates, a very famous video, uh, Inside Out. You know, I have been mm -hmm. practicing that EFT for uh, quite some time in the past, though I don't do it now. But yeah, I have been. And trust me, if you do it twice, thrice a day, it does change your uh, mindset it brings a lot of calmness to your mind and I have mm -hmm. after that advised a few uh, people in the corporate world also to follow the uh, Brad Yates inside out and they have also found good results so would you like to throw light on EFT a little for our viewers yeah um, well EFT in its basic form um, is basically um, acupuncture but we tap on the points, very specific points, um, instead of sticking needles in, basically. Mm -hmm. And when we tap, we're still creating a vibration on the end points to allow the negative energy, the blocks, if you will, um, to allow um, a clearing of those blocks. And we, But we also bring in psychology as well. So if we have a, a, a physical pain, or an emotion that we're feeling, we can literally focus on that, um, not in a negative way, just acknowledge that that's what's going on for us um, by using what we call a crowded chop point. Acknowledge what's going on, like even though I have this physical pain in my chest, I can still love and accept myself. So I acknowledge the issue, I acknowledge that you, know, you are fine, that that's what you're going through. And then as we tap through the point, every point is related to a certain organ. Yes. So, for example, yes. under the eyes related to your stomach. So if the energy is sitting in your stomach and you've got stomach issues, then the yeah. um, this point yeah. here is a really good one to tap on. You know, it's part of the routine. So um, we just focus on, you know, I, I bring in um, the words I can choose to let it go and it's safe to let it go because when we're doing the tapping, we're talking to our subconscious. We're not just saying it out there in the ether. And um, I like to include those words because we forget we have a choice to let things go. And we also unconsciously don't realize that it's safe to let it go as well. So um, I find people by adding in those words will have a bigger shift actually. And, and that's what people are reporting back to me all the time is I really like the fact that you're bringing those words in. So what yeah. according to you, uh, uh, Caroline, uh, how many times a day should do one do EFT to get better and faster results? Um, well, it's not so much about how many times you're going to do it. Like, you know, it's, it's not kind of like, let's do positive thinking three times a day. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's more about recognizing 
in any given moment of the day when you're getting triggered, when you have a negative thought or a feeling, and then it's going okay, you're well, scaling yourself uh, between one to ten and seeing how much negative you are in your thoughts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So let's just say, um, you know, you see something on television that is something about COVID, it brings up fear. All right, because that's the primary thing at the moment, isn't it? Worldwide, it's all the fear mongering that's going on. And so the person can just start to literally start tapping on themselves um, and just and breathing, you know, breathing into the heart space and just allowing to be with that and acknowledge it, you know, that that's what they're feeling right now. Um, yes, yeah, so, or they might have a physical pain um come up and it's like oh okay notice it because you know the thing that i find when i'm teaching is that we we so used to feeling these negative pains or emotions in our body we don't actually notice it until on courses for example that's what i get people to tune into that and they're like wow i never even realized that i was feeling that until or where it is until like we're doing the process you know so it's just awareness and then having the tools to, to you know, EFT is brilliant. It just works so quickly. It is brilliant. Um, no wonder. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, so that's all the surface stuff. Now, you know, EFT, um, you know, like, let's just say memory comes up. You can also do some tapping for any emotion that the memory brings up. However, what we've proven over the years is that matrix re-imprinting, which is still using EFT, actually um, heals the memory at a much core level because we we uh, instead of bringing all the feelings into ourselves and tapping on the emo the emotions for the memory we're actually going into the matrix so we're imagining stepping into the movie of the of the thing as your current day self and tapping on the younger you whether it was half an hour ago, which I had to do with somebody who nearly drowned and was in shock. So we did matrix on with him on that and, and got rid of the shock at a core level. Um, or, you know, like when you're two years old, you know, we can go back then and we literally imagine tapping on the self and it's core, because how much core can you get to heal a trauma than actually going to yourself in the matrix and tapping at that very moment? Does that make sense? So um, the results are phenomenal. You know, I know I've helped. Sure. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yes, I know. Now I can definitely say the results are brilliant because um, uh, Caroline has worked uh, on me. Um, so um, as a little child, as a six-year-old, I was sexually attached. And Carl, uh, her brother, her elder brother, is the one who worked on me years back when in Czech Republic when I was living there. And uh, yeah, I mean, and then much later in the day, Caroline worked on it. So there were some aspects which were still there. And if that work was probably not done, I wouldn't be who I am today or even work in the field because, you know, when you're kind of holding all these memories into your space, you don't allow yourself to move further. Correct. And we have to get it that that was happening then. It's not happening now. And if yeah. it's, we live our life as if things are happening right now to us. So mm. it's one thing that, that the brother and sister are doing such a brilliant job. Uh, over here, I would really like Sandeep to, you know, we would end this topic nicely with uh, Sandeep bringing in, how do you deal with, because you're not doing tapping, but you're doing something very spiritual, very beautiful, connecting with yourself, connecting with the art. How do you help people to dissolve their uh, stress that they're holding in their body because you so beautifully said the legs are not really attached to the body and and yeah how do you do that so ma'am actually it is um, we do the same thing about you do it's just that names are different uh, the other day I was talking to someone about this when we are dancing you know normally when you go to people they say acupressure acupuncture and there are various ways to, you know, cure different body parts, just like how Carolyn Mam was just now spoke about tapping here for the stomach and so on and so forth. So when we talk about our feet, we have so many different portions of our legs, right? Toes, small toes, big one, ball of the foot, heel, so outside, inside, whatever. Now, when we dance, 
we actually use different, 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 different part of that of that foot, put pressure on it at different point of time while dancing. And yes, it is curing us. Those are different. Mm. We are saying one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, eight. And we are putting music to it and putting hand movements to it. And we have somebody else standing next to us doing it as well. Or we dress up in shiny clothes and do it. That's all an extra jargon to it attached. But actually, if you go to see, we are doing the same reflexology that we're talking about. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's the same thing. It is, uh, when mm. you go, if you just put it together, it's also one of the hastas of in the, in the classical dance. You're putting pressure, you're putting pressure on yes. it. Mudras also. Yeah, so you're doing the same thing. It's just mm. that you have a name as dancing. Mm. We have said that we are putting our heel and we are putting our toe and inside part and the outside part. Do it like that hundred times. And here you go to a clinic and the person is pressing it a hundred times for you. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's just that the, there is some doctor who's doing it for you. And here there's a teacher who's telling you, do it yourself. Yeah. And you just tend to do it. So I guess sometimes we need help. Uh, an external help, which is wonderful to receive. And sometimes if you're not privileged enough to get that help, you have to be your own help. And dance becomes that help for you. Dance becomes your doctor. Yes. So True. this line was the dance for you, Anu ma'am. It activates all your chakras. She, helped. she was like the dance of your life. Yeah. Would you be teaching the adults of the population like me? Yeah. You like me? Like me also? That is only in the mind. <laughs> but you've, you've also got the endorphins coming through too, haven't you? You know what I mean? With the music. Like it just sets you like a really good song, like, you know, whether it's upbeat or romantic, whatever, it just kind of brings out them endorphins and you just want to dance, you know? So dancing is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I remember back in teenage years going to the discotheques, you know, and you come home and you're just buzzing and we weren't drinking. It was more to do with the just on the dance floor. And just, yeah. So Sandeep, I really uh, mean to ask you this, that uh, somebody like me who's never danced in her life, never learned anything professionally, and I'm sure Shobha and Caroline uh, are the same. I mean, Caroline definitely did dance, but I came from a home where uh, dance was not considered, you know, the Grana woman wouldn't do it, but I've always had this itch to learn. Would you be creating something where people like us could learn from you? Maybe on the internet? There's nothing as people like us, because I think we all are same. <laughs> yeah, everybody's same. So when you are coming to learn with nothing in, in terms of your background of dance, or whether you are in your 20s, your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, or even if you're a small child, they all are same because the mind is still the same, right? Yeah. I must tell you a very beautiful story. It brought tears to my eyes when I read that letter. I had this student of mine who was in her beginning 70s. Mm. Just day she wrote a letter to me. She said, when I was young, I wanted to dance, just like how you said. But my, my parents said, girls from good families don't dance. So sorry, we cannot mm. dance. So she was not sent to a dance school at all. And when she got married at the age of 18, she said, I told my husband, let's both of us go and dance. So he said, you know what? I'm too busy working. So why don't you go alone and do it? And I came from a family where I could not leave my husband and go and dance alone. So I never went. I had two beautiful children. They both said, can we dance? And I said, yes, why not? So I took them to a dance class. I enrolled them. And I said, can I join with you? They said, how can we dance with mama around us? So I would take them to the dance class, sit outside for almost 18, 20 years. And I could not dance. And today my kids are married. My husband is no more. And I want to do what I could never do. Yeah, same here. I think that was such an amazing, beautiful, heartwarming letter. And she said, thank you so much for making me dance. I said, it was thank you for choosing me mm -hmm. to be dancing. You know, it's what she wanted to do all her life, that lady could not do. And I think today she's doing it. She chose me to be her, her teacher. I think that was a wonderful thing for me. So yeah, it's not just she, she who's thanking me, it's even me who has to thank her. Because uh, I think it, it, it's only the mind that we feel, maybe I cannot do it because we are told so many things by others that we start believing in what they're telling us. Hello, Anu, me. 
dance with Sandeep on his online classes. <laughs> online class, you will have fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> मैं तो अपने हड्डी टूटने से इतना डरती हूँ कि उसके बारे डांस सीखती नहीं हूँ पता नहीं कब हड्डी टूट जाएगी डांस डांस करते हुए वंडरफुल सी दिस इज हाउ लाइफ गोज ऑन आई रियल थैंक ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू ब्यूटिफुल फ्लेवर एंड आई जस्ट थैंक शोभा फॉर ब्रिंगिंग सच ब्यूटिफुल सोसाइटी बिहाइंड वाओ before you guys leave i want both of you to tell us what do you understand by society behind wow and how can you uh, connect with that thank you so over to uh, caroline first and then to sandeep really thank you okay uh, sorry what was you what were you asking anu how do you feel about being a part of the society behind wow what do you understand by it Oh yeah yeah um no I think it's so so important like I say like um I was you know in a failing marriage nursing bringing up children like that whole life for 23 years and I do value it because now I I appreciate my life now but the key the absolute key to be where I am now and just living this that's why I'm calling it past life to dream life like literally living this dream life and it doesn't mean that I live in a mansion it doesn't it's not about that but i know i can get on a plane well i used to be able to get on a plane <laughs> any time i wanted to or now i can just get on an internal plane or get in my car and drive um and just that whole sense of feeling that soul connection knowing that i've healed you know traumas in this life traumas in past life to be present to myself today Do you know what I mean? And um, and connected, and just to have that very. I think the the quiet mind is so so important, um, and to to be able to share with you on this platform that there are tools out there um, where you can. Um, you know, you talked about the soul not being in the body. Well, that I know is from trauma. A lot of it's from trauma, whether it's in utero or at birth or later. and so with these tools you can actually heal and the soul comes back in i see it time and time again it's really quite phenomenal in fact it happened today in a session i won't go into that because it's um, with a young lady and i said oh you, you know are you feeling grounded and she said jeff like i never do normally feel grounded and with the work that we did i believe her soul came back in because you could see it in her and so that is just very special but yes thank you for provided this platform because i have a huge affinity with india as anu will tell you i went to osho international like had an amazing time there i do believe he came to me and encouraged me to do this work by the way with past lives he came in the auditorium um so yeah i'm very grateful for having this platform to share thank what's there yeah thank you and <laughs> yes sandeep well shobha ma'am you have always been coming up with great concepts and thank you for making me a part of your second episode it just feels wonderful i know the society behind wow your purpose is to bring different type of people different yes. types of practices mindsets uh, ways of life to other people and like you correctly say learning to unlearn also is very very important uh, in our in our life because we tend to get so boxed up in certain things of our own life and we don't realize that there's lots more outside it as well which can become a part of our life as well so mm-hmm. these kind of uh, chats and talks and people talking about their, their 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 journey and their way of thinking it can enrich us in so many different ways mm-hmm. and maybe even if we can pick up one small point and bring it into our life the society behind wow has done its job yes you know sandeep i'd like to share something with you in the first episode we had uh, <clears throat> yang zaiga who was uh, like is a uh, a friend of anumata also and he was with us and we were sharing his journey something so interesting he said i right from the time i have heard him trust me it's not getting over me there were two things which i learned from him which were very very important he said he writes something called crisis book people write gratitude journals and forgiveness journals but he is writing crisis book so we asked him what is this crisis book that you are writing about 
and it was so informative that he said he is writing about all the crises in the life that can happen and what would be his actions when these crises happen so he is well prepared for it and that was just so touching because how many of us really think of doing these things you see the second thing that he mentioned was every day in the morning he goes and he hugs trees mm. so when he is hugging trees he is getting the life force energy is getting the prana and that mm. that hugging the tree if he is hugging 10 trees in the morning imagine the life force energy that he has throughout the day to do his activities with his mind body and soul aligned completely so these are small little things that we learn from each other mm -hmm. and we can explore only if i know what you are doing and what i am doing and how we can work together in making our lives peaceful even now can't hug people so actually hugging trees is the best option that he has chosen <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> and he was such a sweet at no on the call he was like he was very very positive in his talks and uh, everything he answered so much with love full of love it was very nice to have him and uh, thank you anu for bringing him on the show it was really mm. good so this is what uh, society behind wow is where we are trying to learn from each other and if we are getting people on the show who need little assistance from us in terms of what they can do to release their uh, daily stress levels or anger or whatever we can definitely guide them in our small ways that that has been our learning in life so mm -hmm. it's always time to share and care is what i believe and uh, this is just a small initiative to create a good society behind wow mm. thank you so much for having us over thank you Thank yeah. you so much, Thank Anu. You. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. It was a wonderful evening today spent with you all. Thank you, and bless you. you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. You too. Bye okay. bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.